Is it a shocker to people that grew up in the church that the church is standing firm on principles about same sex marriage? Welcome to the last dispensation. You're living in it. We don't really know where the world is going to go. But now everybody knows that you can't stop for too long. Got to keep going. Don't really know. Where the world Hello, is everyone, and welcome go. back to The Last Dispensation. Today, we're going to talk about a recent article that's been making waves in the community. Of course, it's found in the Salt Lake Tribune. The article discusses the experiences of several individuals who have had their church member withdrawn due to their same sex relationships. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, how could the church do this? These people are just trying to live their lives and be true to themselves. But before we dive into that, let me ask you a question. Are we really surprised, especially if most of these people uh, grew up in the church? Are they really surprised uh, by these decisions? I mean, think about it. We're talking about a church that has a clear stance on same-sex relationships. We're talking about a church that has a clear doctrine on the importance of chastity and the law of God. So, when individuals choose to engage in behavior that goes against that doctrine, can we really be shocked when the church takes action? That is the question. So, let's read the article, and then I'll finish up with my two cents. All righty, all righty, all righty. Uh, LDS, church, uh, LDS Church withdrawing memberships of some saints in same-sex marriages, but not all. Gasp. Okay, let's figure out what's going on here. How can the church be so uh, flip-floppy in one area and in the next? Well, most of you know the answer to that, right? Let's, let's get into this talk about it. Some have been ousted from the faith. Uh, others haven't. They appear to be at the mercy of the views of an ever-rotating slate of local lay leaders. And there's the, the roulette wheel and these poor couples that are just on a roller coaster ride from hell, right? Okay, well, let's find out. Jeanette Peterson, uh, a lifelong member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, didn't think much of it when she heard that her stake president wanted to meet with her. Maybe this regional lay leader wanted to offer her uh, a volunteer assignment, of course, also known as a calling. Or maybe he just wanted to see how life was going for the 31-year-old uh, with a... Uh, a baby boy and a wife, Tammy, who, despite not being a church member, attended faithfully with her each Sunday. So here we got a member of the church uh, who's a lifelong member at that, meaning that she knows the protocol. She's got it down. She understands. I'm sure um, as we go on that she would be very appalled. Uh, uh, she would be gasping. She would be taken aback. She would be shocked that this is happening to her because, I mean, she's just like any other uh, ordinary same-sex couple in, in the church, right? With children that have been attending for years. Same-sex marriage is not new, but it's, it has not been as prominent as it is uh, now. And so let's go on. For the first several minutes of their conversation, Peterson thought, she was right about the reason for the meeting. Then came the clearing of the throat, the slight adjustment in the chair, and she said her heart just dropped. Oh my goodness, this, wh what? This is a shocker. Peterson, who lives in West Orange, Texas, said the stake president informed her that, I'm sorry about the, the uh, sarcasm, but I'm trying to uh, point out the obvious here, okay? It's very obvious. Just like if you served somebody Lay's potato chips with their Big Mac, would you be surprised if they were shocked that those weren't fries? Yeah, it's stupid. Just shut up. Peterson, who lives in West Orange, Texas, said the stake president informed her that uh, basically that she was married to a woman. She was breaking the law of chastity. Uh, she grew up in the church, but she didn't know that. Unless she sought a divorce, she recalled him saying, 
uh, a counsel would be, unless she sought a divorce, she recalled him saying counsel would be held to determine whether to withdraw her, mem- her church membership. Uh, but but she, her jaw is dropping. This is news to me. I, I, I grew up in the church. I, I never thought this would happen, that this day would ever come. But she has a good reason to be shocked. And it goes back to Charlie and Ryan. And I'll go on. Don't go away. There's great things that are coming your way. So, uh, unless she sought a divorce, she recalled him saying a council would be held to determine whether to withdraw her church membership um, or, or you get a divorce. While the Utah-based church with 17.2 million members around the world teaches that same-sex attraction is not a sin, it insists acting on it is and remains adamantly opposed to same-sex marriage. Still, Peterson was confused. Let's just stop right there. That's where I'm like baffled, not baffled because it's all showmanship, brothers and sisters. These people are not shocked. And I will say these people, I'm not, man, I have got gay friends and I've had them since the eighties. Okay. I ran away with three people when I was eight, 17 years old to Seattle, Washington. But then I went up, I knew my uncle was up there, my dad's brother, and I stayed with them through the summer and came home. But, uh, and one of the guys that I ran away with was gay. Now, we didn't do anything, but he was gay. And, uh, which was weird because he had a girlfriend, but that was more like his um, hag. Some of you know what I'm saying. (laughs) His friend, right? Uh, But homosexuality is not foreign to me. And I don't think it's foreign to a lot of you folks uh, because that's not what we're saying when I say you people. So for they'll come back. They will come back and say, what do you mean you people? I mean, you people that pretend that you're shocked when you, uh, when you hear doctrine that you were raised with, especially when you went on a mission. Through social media, she had learned of Charlie Bird. This is why she's shocked, though. She's shocked because she's saying this. A former Cosmo, the Cougar mascot for church-owned BYU, and his husband, Ryan Clifford, a famously active and married gay couple in Utah. Word had it they were allowed to not just keep their membership, but also hold callings and participate in the sacrament or communion. She said her stake president acknowledged that he knew about Bird and Clifford. So I asked, why is there so much inconsistency? She recalled, why can he be married and I'm over here getting kicked out kicked out no nobody kicked you out you were given an ultimatum but you weren't kicked out and i'm wondering if this is accurate what she's saying because remember we're not getting his word we're not getting the stake president or the bishop's words to which she said he responded not all stake presidents take seriously their jobs as judges in israel i don't know maybe he said that maybe he didn't maybe it's taken out of context and maybe it's not. Maybe he feels like there should be uh, harsher penalties for what's going on. Uh, I think it's more like he's possibly, he's a stake president and stake presidents are close to their general authorities. And those stake presidents and general authorities are most, the higher up you get like that, the more on the same page you will find. You will find there being a rogue like, for instance, when the uh, 2000, or sorry, when the 1978 revelation came out and in and, and general conference, when uh, in Eldon Tanner uh, asked for the, the sustaining of the uh, decision, there was one hand in a red seat that went up. Now, that's not common. Does that mean that that firewall, the Lord's firewall, uh, keeps everybody out? No, here's my point. Maybe there are a few that don't take their job serious or they are trying to be politically correct or I'm thinking more like this or every situation is different and the spirit moves upon these leaders uh, according to the varying nuances and reasons behind why the Lord is telling them to take action or not take action. Remember, The Lord doesn't make decisions according to what we see myopically. The the Lord makes decisions according to what 
truth is uh, hyperopically. And that is the truth. And that is through the spirit of Christ upon these men. And they are all individual leaders. They are all at their learning curves as well. The spirit sometimes has to yell at one as opposed to, as opposed to another leader where the spirit doesn't have to yell because that leader already understands the principle and maybe just needs to be nudged by the spirit. So there are many different reasons to say this is the only reason why is absurdly myopic. Let's go on. This phenomenon, familiar to Latter-day Saints across the globe, refers to the power of local lay leaders to shape the experiences of their congregants. Even in a church as hierarchical and regimented as the one Peterson had grown up attending. The implications can be minor. What music counts as appropriate for youth dances or more significant, whether female leaders can sit on the stand during Sunday services. In cases like Peterson's, they can cost a person's membership. Now, <clears throat> I'm not going to get into female leaders on the stand. I could care less. And I, I think if they said that tomorrow, Everyone would be like, great. And, and that's it. And I think the females agree with me out there that that, that is uh, whiny baby stuff. Okay. But like I said before, it's easy for me to say because no one's ever told me not to sit on the stand if I was a leader. Right. And I get that. So if you were told not to sit on the stand, you would be wondering why you're not sitting on the stand. And I get that. Three other women, another couple living in Texas and a woman living in Utah in same-sex marriages cited leadership roulette as primary factors. Re leadership roulette, no. Um, it's called, in any corporation, just take McDonald's. A guy that manages this franchise in Wyoming is not going to do things the same way and make the same decisions as the guy that is running a corporate office in Rhode Island. Uh, but it is McDonald's, right? And I'm not going to explain uh, already, like, I'm kind of re-explaining myself because I already did a few minutes ago. Moving on. So, <clears throat> as far as they could tell in their own membership removals, I don't like these commercials. I can't stand these ads. Stop seeing this ad. This is 100% speculation, but we believe it was because of a new bishop, said the Utah woman. <laughs> blame it on the new bishop and then blame it on the old bishop, right? Who married in 2021. She and her wife had their memberships removed. A little more than a year later, she asked that her name not be used out of respect for those within the church who continue to love and support us. Don't go away because I have a little bit to say. In Peterson's case, she believes she was able to fly below her stake president's radar for the first couple of years in her marriage. See, all the language here is wrong anyway. This is not how a member of the Church of Jesus Christ acts anyway. Forget same-sex marriage. You, anybody that's talking about flying under the radar of a leader, trying to avoid things and talking about a leader being their enemy, basically, is not following the Lord's church anyway. Sorry, because her job kept her from attending church regularly. Only after a promotion allowed her to participate weekly, including the week of state conference, a regional gathering of congregations, did she receive a summons. And let me tell you something. Summons. If you're not going to take that opportunity to learn by the Holy Ghost why your leader calls you in and to be chastised by the Spirit and the Savior and to, and to grow from something that's not going your way all the time, because learning is not always about you getting your way. I don't care if it's by the Lord or by basic training and, you know, it, anything in life. Learning is most of the time through trial and error. If you're not going to learn from mistakes and you're not, you're not willing to learn the hard knock way, then you're never going to learn any other way. <clears throat> and you're not. You're, it's not going to be as effective. So if you can't understand that it's a blessing Chastisement is a blessing, especially when it's done by the Holy Ghost. Had her leader been more of the ilk of Bird and Clifford, she believes that she would have been allowed to remain in full membership. The ilk. I, I hate that word used a lot, the ilk. The other 
unless you're really talking about the ilk. The other Texas couple, the other Texas couple whose membership was withdrawn earlier this year after four months of marriage thought it was significant that their council was called shortly after a new stake president was installed. They also request that their names not be used. In contrast, Ryan and Liz Giles of the Instagram account, The Fourth Option, have lived in two wards or congregations, one in Houston and their current ward in Yakima, Washington. Since their marriage in 2021, they have yet to have their membership challenged. I would guess it has more to do with leadership roulette than anything, Ryan said. Explaining that it, that extends past stake presidents to higher ranking area authorities. Nothing about the Holy Ghost. Nothing about you don't understand the spirit. This is not, these people are not following. They do not understand. They do not understand. They do not comprehend. This is not a social club, brothers and sisters. Uh, extends past stake presence to higher ranking authorities who may, I got to rush through this because I got something to say, may push excommunication when local leaders may wish to just leave things alone to offer more freedoms. Indeed, both Peterson and the other Texas couple said their bishops each hold them, uh, each told them they were against the final decision to withdraw their memberships. Peterson's bishop did not provide a comment for the Salt Lake Tribune, and the newspaper was unable to reach the other couple's bishop. Official church guidance for local leaders. I'm going to say it one more time. Don't go away. I have, I have some, I have my, I have my reaction to this. Don't go away. According to the church's handbook, uh, counsel may be necessary uh, in this situation. The, the Tribune reached out. I just took a bite of Tres Leches cake that was made for me yesterday by my neighbor. And then Andrea made really good pudding, but my neighbor made me a Tres Leches cake. It's good. It's too good. It's no good for me. All right, the Tribune reached out to the church for clarification on the factors that ultimately decide whether a council is called. A spokesperson responded with the excerpts from the same handbook. Only a man and a woman who are alleged, legally and lawfully wedded as husband and wife should have sexual relations, it reads. In God's light, moral cleanliness is very important. Violations of the law of chastity are very serious. Those involved misuse the sacred power of God as given to create life. Whether a membership council occurs depends it continues on many circumstances. For example, a council is more likely to be necessary to help a member repent if he or she violates uh, temple covenants or if the sin was repetitive. Other factors include, among other things, the magnitude of the sin and evidence of repentance. You know what's funny is instead of looking at Charlie Bird, isn't that what they wanted? Just one little milestone, like a Charlie Bird and uh, Ryan, a Charlie and Ryan situation. Is it Ryan? Doggone it. A Charlie and Ryan situation, right? But that's not good enough. That didn't even last very long, did it? Because now we're like, well, what about everyone? But I don't know why Ryan and Charlie are still there. But I know that the Lord knows. And I know that the stake president and bishop, I don't know why. I don't know if they're learning something. I don't know if they're ready to do something. I don't know if, uh, I don't know. And maybe the Lord doesn't want to do something because it will affect. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the Lord's staying that decision for public reasons. I don't know. Uh, all three women said the law of chastity was cited either verbally or in letters informing them of the council's decision. Reason for their removal. Peterson took this information and with the support of his. So any sin, though. Are you going to argue with the, the leadership? That right there, that's just a red flag for me, period. When you see somebody uh, arguing, uh, it is a decision that the leaders are making with Heavenly Father. Peterson took this information and with the support of her wife, came back to the stake president with an offer. <laughs> an offer. What if she and Tammy were no longer intimate? Okay. All right. It wasn't enough, he said. She recounted, well, you'll still be in the appearance of sin. She recalled him then asking if she wanted to attend the membership council. 
And I said, no, I don't, because in your eyes, the only solution is to break up my son's parents, she remembered. That's the only solution for you, to break up a family. Peterson said she received notification of the council's verdict to withdraw her membership on Mother's Day. This decision will release you from the covenants that you have made with the Lord, the letter stated, and allow you to partake of his mercies while you travel the path of repentance. The, la- the letter didn't specify the reason for her loss of membership. Instead, focusing on her opportunity to draw closer to your Savior and feel the love he has for you. The Tribune made multiple unsuccessful attempts to reach a state president, whom the church recently promoted to an Area 70. I'd promote him too. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I'd promote him too. Why did it happen to us? Even if Bird and Clipper were to one day find themselves under the leadership of someone less friendly to queer Latter-day Saints like them trying to remain in the fold, the w- women agreed the couple with their almost 300,000 Instagram followers between them. Is this the reason why Charlie and, and Clifford are in that position? What say you? What, what do you have to say about it? Teach me in the comments section. So she said, it just hurts. One of the Texas women said, if we had more of a social following, if we had people on our side, we knew someone in Salt Lake City, I think we would have had a better chance. It's about who you know. The Utah women echoed this, explaining she had just had her membership uh, rescinded when Bird and Clifford announced their marriage. I had three thoughts at the exact same time, she recalled. The first was, I am so excited for the two of them. The second was, oh no, what is going to happen to them now? And the third that immediately followed us was, but if their membership isn't withdrawn, why did it happen to us? Bird and Clifford did not respond to requests for comment. They're like, oh no, we ain't stirring no, we like it just the way we are. Individuals who lose their membership are told, among other counsel, that they no longer participate in temple rites, give a sermon, pray at church tithing. They are still permitted and even encouraged as Peterson was to attend Sunday worship services. Peterson and other women interviewed still go to church, largely because they said their fellow congregates have been a source of comfort and support. That's the only reason. Not because the atonement of Jesus Christ. Shortly after the Texas Couples Membership Council, I didn't know this was that long, a five-hour ordeal that they both agreed ranked as one of the worst experiences of their lives. Their bishop dropped by unannounced while one of them was home pulling weeds. It was 98 degrees. The man was in a suit, but he knelt in a dirt beside the women and began tugging at the green shoots. He said, I can't tell you how much I wish the council members would have asked me what I felt about the whole thing. Even though I know my opinion doesn't hold sway, the women remembered. I would have stood and told them that you should not have been there. The ones who want to stay, the ones who want to worship, the ones who want to be at church and bring their kids to church, the moms. They are not the ones who are meant to be called to a membership council. That visit, she said, meant a lot to her and her wife. Even if it didn't end with their names getting back on the books, even if he wasn't very good at weeding. When asked if church is a positive experience for her and her wife, the Utah woman responded with a resounding, absolutely. But why? If we're not ready to look deeper in. Okay, I'm going to get to that in a second. Uh, the people who want us there and are very uh, open about wanting us there, they're our protectors, she said. It's not about the people, though, sister. It is partly, but not. that's not why you're going. They just want to make sure we're happy and safe and healthy. Peterson said the same has been true in their ward, located on the border between Texas and Louisiana. Those whose membership has been withdrawn aren't permitted per church's handbook to com- comment in lessons. So Peterson said she had been dutifully sitting on her hands with a teacher after class, pulled her aside and told her to contribute whenever she wanted. And, you know, we're not even talking about those who I think are more that have repented and came to Christ and put away. But that's not what this is about. I'll tell you what this is about in a second. When Peterson, when Peterson, when Peterson reminded her of the rule, the woman was undeterred. I might just call on you, Peterson rem- remembered her saying, to give a prayer and dare someone to challenge me. Especially gratifying, she said, have been the times when individuals have come up to her and cited her example as a reason they, s- they still attend church despite their own struggles with the institution. So right here, ha- especially gratifying, she said, have been the times when individuals have come up to her and, s- and cited her example. 
That's why they attend because they're getting positive feedback and attaboys and accolades. That's why you go to church. That's why you're still attending. So it's turned into uh, activism. Kind of. Despite their own struggles with the institution. Yeah. You see the, the troublesome language there? We have people in our ward, one of the Texas women said, that have just looked at us and said, I'm here because you two are still here. Not because of Jesus Christ. Not because of the sacrament. Not because I'm repenting of my sins weekly and daily. Because you two are here. Choosing to remain. It's unclear how many same-sex couples are on the church rolls or how many have been or are being removed from them. When asked if she thought whether her and others represented a kind of larger crackdown, the Utah woman said she didn't think so. Rather, she said she believes they're the result of a possible positive shift underway among the church's gay and lesbian members. Wow. Activism all the way, huh? Based on her own observations, she believes there are... I'm sorry, I don't want people... has nothing to do with them gay. I don't want these type of attitudes running the church. That's not the church. That's not the Lord's church. So he's not going to allow it. He's not going to... This is rebellion. This is rebellion. Based on her observation, she believes there are more individuals and couples stepping out into their authenticity as both queer and Latter-day Saints. No. There are more that are repenting. Ben Shalady, a gay Latter-day Saint and co-host of the podcast Questions from the Closet. Oh, gosh. Yeah, Questions from the Closet. That sounds so uh, religious hobby. That's a religious hobby if, it, if I hadn't seen one. With Bird said the same. In the past, I observed a lot of people feeling like they have to choose between being in the church and being in a same-sex relationship said Shalady, who, Sh- Shalati, I don't know how to pronounce the name, who recently accepted a position teaching social work at Utah Valley University. Now I'm seeing that many people don't feel like they have to make that choice. They can do it. And I'm going to tell you something. If this became the norm, I'm telling you, if this attitude and if same-sex couples were to be allowed in and, it, and to get sealed in the temple, which this isn't going to happen because it's, it's not an eternal principle. But if it was to happen, it would turn into any other LGBTQ church there is today, eventually. It would go that direction. Absolutely. Now I'm seeing that many people don't have, uh, feel like they have to make that choice. They can do both. The hand to hold. The hand to hold. As Peterson left her stake president's office that fateful afternoon, her fussy baby squirming in her arms, she felt heavy with grief. They're already making the leaders of the church uh, the reason for their grief. These are not friends. The Lord's structured church. So that you're saying, in essence, that Christ who came and established 12 apostles in the Book of Mormon in America. And the first thing he did was, after he was baptized, was call fishers of men. His structure is flawed, and it is the enemy. So you're saying, in essence, the the Savior is your enemy. Because all the reasons you give for attending church, haven't. there's nothing about the atonement in here. Nothing at all, and you won't hear it. I felt this intense love, and you won't hear it from Charlie, and uh, you won't hear about the atonement. Uh, She said, pausing with emotion in the memory, and it was just so overwhelming that I was just like, whoa, I don't even feel this about my son. Something she said told her everything was going to be okay, which is not to say easy. Particularly devastating has been seeing the wedge, the withdrawal of her membership has been between her family and members. Instead of taking the opportunity to take a higher road and receive more blessings in your life. Go back to the temple eventually. No, I'm going to stick my ground. This is my way is not wrong. Who have been overwhelmingly supportive of her and the church. And I don't even care. Anything. If, 
if there was policy a long time ago and you didn't f- follow that policy, you're still going against the narrative. I know that's not popular. I know a lot of you don't want to hear that, but that is the truth. She decided nonetheless to put her trust in that feeling throughout the days and weeks that have followed. I've definitely been holding someone's hand, she said, whether that be Christ or whether that be a loved uh, relative that's passed. Okay, so I like the reference to Christ. I'm not saying it's not easy. You have a friend, but you could still be friends with that friend. Shut up, Troy. You're not married to that person. How dare you? What if I was to tell you to leave your wife? I don't have any explanation there. Let's move on. Matthew 10, brothers and sisters, think not that I have come to bring peace, but a sword. I'm here to divide families. What did he mean? Was he talking about this? No, he's talking about sometimes you have to do hard things to take a higher road. But I've got something else to say. So sit tight. I know that I constantly have had someone with me since then. Okay. All right. So there's that. Now. Elder Dallin H. Oaks said the church does not have a position on the causes of any of these susceptibilities or inclinations, including those related to same-sex attraction, same-gender attraction, but what the church does have a position on is a behavior that results from those inclinations. And my point here is that they've had that position. And let's be real, folks. We all know that the same-sex relationships are not in line with the teachings of the church. So when individuals choose to engage in those relationships, they know that there will be consequences. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, but what about love and acceptance? Shouldn't the church be more understanding and compassionate? And to that, I say, absolutely. And we are. The church should not be a, the church should be a place of love and acceptance, but that doesn't mean that we have to compromise on our values and our doctrine. Quote, if you love me, keep my commandments. Close quote. Let's do it again. If you love me, keep my commandments. First counselor in the Relief Society General Presidency in 2015, her name was Carol M. Stevens, and still is, she's not dead, said that God's commandments are a manifestation for his love for us, of his love for us. And obedience to his commandments is an expression of our love to him. <clears throat> commandments are a part of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And let's not forget, folks, the church is not just a social club. It's a spiritual institution with a sacred mission to bring people closer to Christ, to our Heavenly Father, about the atonement of Jesus Christ. Those are the main reasons you go, to fellowship with other like-minded saints that help you, not just give you accolades and pat you on the back and say, good job, keep doing what you're doing, but sometimes to tell you to stop doing what you're doing. And sometimes that means making tough decisions that might not be popular with everyone. But as members of the church, we have to trust in our leaders even imperfect leaders, but that have common sense leaders, okay? And in the Lord's plan, that aren't asking you to jump off a bridge, okay? We have to trust that they are making decisions that are in our best interest, even if we don't always understand them. Now, I want to talk about Jeanette Peterson for a second, the lady that, the whole story, right? Who was mentioned in the article, she's a lifelong member of the church, and yet she was still surprised. That's what all of this came to my mind. This is what the whole thing is about being surprised. And when her bishop gave her an ultimatum, I'm not saying that it's easy to hear, but come on, folks. She grew up in the church. She knows the doctrine. She knows the expectations. So can we really be shocked that her bishop would take action when she chose to engage in behavior that goes against the doctrine? Doctrine and Covenant section 20, verse 37. And again, by way of commandment to the church concerning the manner of baptism, all those who humble. Start with humility, okay? Tell me what the spirit of everything is here. First, you humble yourselves with a broken heart and contrite spirit. Then you witness that you have truly repented of your sins. By what? By taking upon yourself the name of Jesus Christ, having a determination to serve him in all things to the end. Truly manifesting by your works that you have received this. What is the works? The works are not going out and doing everything for everyone. The works are the, 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 uh, the works are the ordinances. The works are repentance and bringing fruit meat for repentance. Those are your works. 
and, and, and the spirit of Christ. Okay. That, and then manifest by those works that you have received the spirit of Christ unto the remission of your sins shall be received by baptism into the church. That's what's happening here, folks. That's what should be happening here. I mean, the church is not condoning behavior that is contrary to its teachings and never will. And if we're going to be honest with ourselves, we have to admit that we knew this was coming. We knew that the church would take action if we chose to engage in behavior that goes against its doctrine. All of us sitting in the congregate, we know that. Now, I want to talk to you about Charlie Bird and Ryan Clifford for a second. Their leaders might be learning to grow thicker skins and make a harder stand against same-sex marriages. And you know what? That's not a bad thing. As members of the church, we need to be willing to stand up for what we believe in. Even if it's not popular, we need to be willing to take a stand against behavior that is contrary to the teachings of the church. But I am not in the position to speak for these leaders. I do not know why. But for some reason, they're all on the same page for some reason, and I don't know why. Okay? Elder M. Russell Ballard said, the experience of same-sex attraction is complex. It is a complex reality for many people. The attraction itself is not a sin, but acting on it is, and that's exactly what's happening here. The church is not condemning people for their actions, but it, it's condemning the behavior once again, and the, and, and the behavior that results from those attractions. But that's it, brothers and sisters. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ding the bell for notifications. Leave your comments. Let me know what do you think about all this? Where, what am I missing? What am I getting right? What am I getting wrong? Maybe not getting wrong, but what can you add to this? What does the Spirit tell you and teach you from this? Let's learn something spiritual. What do you think about the, the scribe, the author, the penman, the literature of this article? What are they missing? What are they lacking? What is, uh, what is Jeanette lacking? Because remember, brothers and sisters, I, we are here to learn by the Spirit. Our faith, I've always said this, the adversary would have us be shaken always by negative information. But the Lord has promised, he's promised you, he's promised me that if we hold fast to the iron rod, okay, in my opinion, this is not holding fast to the iron rod, but if we hold fast to the iron rod of scripture and guidance by the Holy Ghost, then we are able to withstand a storm. Then we are able to emerge from darkness with unshakable testimony. It is by the Holy Ghost that we discern truth from error. So leave your comments below. And if you'd like to contribute to the program, a Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal, there are also products sold that I get a percentage of right there in the video. There's always a thanks button, but I would, but YouTube takes a bit of that. So uh, go through Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal, and YouTube memberships that all hold the program. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next time.